Hey guys, Chris here, and welcome to a settings guide for Rainbow Six Siege. In here, I'll be showing my settings for console, but mainly with a goal for those who are beginners, or those who want to find their own settings and have more questions and are confused about them, to adjust them for their liking. Now before we start though, I just want to really say that there is no best settings nor best sensitivity with these types of videos. Honestly, the best settings are what you are comfortable with. And sure, you can copy settings from, you know, another video, but your playstyle is mostly different from theirs, and you probably won't enjoy high sensitivity if you enjoy, like, a low sensitivity, for instance, and your playstyle is kind of slow. But anyways, getting into this here, starting with general here, matchmaking preferences. These are only for training grounds, but if you're looking for a good way to warm up and such, definitely recommend uh, turning on elimination and headshots only as it'll pretty much help you warm up your aim, but also train you to aim more for the head overall, which can lead to you winning more gunfights overall. And the maps are up to you overall as well, but I suggest house, coastline, and border overall, as they're pretty solid maps for training on them. Pings are definitely a yes for on, as you'll be able to see what your teammates are pinging, whether it's an enemy, or some sort of drawing they made on the wall. Now for metrics, I turn these off because really they, they don't serve a purpose for me, but they, they pretty much appear in the left corner, as you can see. They show your FPS, your ping, and which version of the game, if you want to see that for some reason. Uh, if you want to leave them on, go ahead, that's up to you, but honestly, they serve really no purpose in gameplay-wise. Now, connectivity feedback, uh, This I have this on default. It pretty much shows you if anything is going wrong, like in case I have latency going on, there's jitter, there's packet loss, FPS drops, stuff like that. I keep these on to help me know like what is happening, if and if my game is really fucking up, or if it's really just the servers being ass once again. <laughs> now, diffuser pickup, I have this on both because I don't mind it automatically picking up for me or interacting to pick it up. But if you prefer how it was before, pretty much just walking over it and it picks it up for you, you can put it on automatic. But if not, then manual is the way to go. I just have it on both because I enjoy both of them. Now, drone after prep, uh, this one I have on manual because I like to remain on my drone after the prep phase ends to see if there's more stuff to point out for my teammates. But if you want to exit your drone as soon as the preparation phase ends, <laughs> uh, you can definitely put it on automatic. Semi-automatic, it says right here it automatically exits it unless you were controlling your own drone. I don't really have experience with that, but that's also there for you. I definitely have this on manual because I like to stay in it when the prep phase ends. Match replay is on, one that you should always keep on in my opinion to view your matches and see if there's any moments that you want to look back on. Crossplay matchmaking is a yes. For PC, I don't think it really does anything other than just match you with Amazon Luna and Stadia players, if there's even any on those platforms. But for console, I definitely suggest turning it on unless you don't want to play with people from other platforms, like for say I'm on Xbox, so I have this on so I get to play with PlayStation players, I get to play with my PlayStation friends, and so forth, so forth. Now for HUD, um, to summarize this section, I suggest mainly keeping everything on normal, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, one thing that I would suggest to turn off if you're having a little trouble with is teammate outlines. Let me find it here. Uh, if it affects your gameplay because you can't really see the enemies that well because, you know, it probably shows the teammates behind them, so you're kind of confused, then, yeah, you can turn it off. Uh, I highly suggest keeping all most of these on, though, because especially some for, like, compass and pings, they, those really help in situations like ranked games, so yeah, definitely don't want to turn stuff like these off. For audio, all of these are on English, like spoken language, subtitles, and stuff. Unless you want to have Italy in your ear screaming at you, then yeah, you can have that as well. For volumes, I actually keep the master volume on at 80, as I don't want the sound to be very loud overall, but nor too quiet. I know it seems like you know this is really loud, but it's really not, in my opinion. Uh, it's really a sweet spot for me, as uh, some people keep it at 100, and that's alright too. It really just comes down to, you know, what you're comfortable with, and, you know, if you're able to handle those loud noises. Now music, I keep this at 40. Uh, not a big deal if you turn it off either. I just really like the music in this game, it's very good. <laughs> Dialogue is at 100 to hear what the other operators and announcers are saying and such. Now dynamic range, this one is important because I've seen the comparisons of night mode and hi-fi range. Uh, honestly, night mode is good if you want to hear footsteps and more sounds at a low volume. It actually comes in handy a lot compared to hi-fi, where mainly it's just 
like I guess it's for casual people, you know, who don't really care about footsteps and just you know want to hear the chaos all around them. So it's up to you, honestly. I keep it on night mode, especially if you're going to play something like ranked or if you're being serious. Unless you're just casual and you just want to have it on hi-fi and just hear whatever chaos is going around you, then yeah, put it on hi-fi. Ooh, display. Now this one, I highly suggest turning V-Sync off. It says that screen tearing will occur, but in reality, it's not even that affecting. Uh, graphics mode, I believe this is only on the next-gen consoles, you know, Xbox Series X slash S and the PlayStation 5. I suggest turning this on to prioritize performance, because even here it says it's for competitive gameplay. But overall, it's a way better option and allows for more frames overall and allows for more power from your console. Whereas the resolution, it pretty much caps it at 60 FPS, so definitely recommend prioritize performance. Now field of view, this one is a little tricky for some people because they don't know which one to use. Um, I use 90 because I'm used to it in many other games like Call of Duty and Battlefield. But if you're confused on what to pick, um, between like 84 and 90 is a good range. I've seen people use 88, I've seen people use 85, 87, stuff like that. I use it on 90, so I'd say maybe to experiment with this type of field of views to see which one actually works better for you. Now for brightness, I keep this on 70. I found somewhere between 65 and 70 is a good range, as it's not too bright nor too dark. For me, I found that 70 works for overall because it allows me to see better on certain maps and it doesn't allow it to be too dark and for me, getting jump scared <laughs> as well. This one you may want to experiment a little bit with as well. 65 and 70 is a good range. Oh, controls. This is probably the part that most of you came for, no doubt. I turn off vibrations as I don't want it affecting my gameplay, although this is personal preference for like the thousandth time. <laughs> so if you want it on, go ahead. If not, turn it off. It really, it really isn't a big factor in gameplay. It's just there. <laughs> for gadgets, Advanced makes it so that you can hold your gadget out and manually deploy it by pretty much pressing a button. I like this as I can find, you know, a good spot to place down an ADS or a Malusi gadget as opposed to automatic where you just hold the gadget button and then release it and, and when you're putting it down, it pretty much does it for you. Now drone deployment, I have this on advanced so that I can remain in my operator view. So pretty much like when, if you have it on standard when you deploy a drone, you'll immediately automatically be put into the drone phase and pretty much allowed to control it there. Whilst advanced, you pretty much just get to throw the drone and you still get to stay in your operator view. Keeping it on advanced, in my opinion, is better because it comes with its own little advantage that you can actually bait people with it. You can actually throw a drone and actually throw them off, which can lead you to a free kill. Now, controller layout, uh, I have this on default, but there is more layouts if you prefer it, such as bumper leaner, you get to lean with the bumpers. Uh, evolved bumper shooter, some of you may be used to this in Call of Duty, like you get to shoot and aim with the bumpers. And there's also bumper croucher, which also some of you may be used to from Call of Duty. You get to melee with the B button and pretty much a lee or pretty much a crouch with the stick. So if those work for you, put those on. If not, then you can go with default. Now look inversion, I don't know why you would turn that on. Uh, controller rotation, I keep this on classic. Updated may seem better on paper, but overall classic is the one that you want to be on. Now on to sensitivities. I have mine on 3085 as I've evolved playing this game over the years. It's gone from a slow sense to kind of now a high sense. Um, dead zones are 662. If you are looking for a good beginner sensitivity, the one that I've seen a lot of good progress on is 2545. It's not really too fast nor too slow. It's kind of in the middle there. And it's, that's pretty much a recommendation that I would give if you're looking for a good sensitivity to really build off of and build momentum off of. Now dead zones, somewhere between 5 and 8 are a good range. Um, I keep these on 6 because honestly, I find those perfect. Yeah, 5 is a little too fast for me, so I just I found 6 to be better. Apparently you can put this down to 0, I haven't tested that out yet, but I probably won't either. <laughs> but somewhere around 5 to 8 is a good range. Too much can actually make your stick feel like very delayed, but if you want something that is like responsive, 5 is good, or if you want something to slow it down a little, somewhere between like 7 and 8 is good. Now, ADS sensitivity. This one is a little tricky too for beginners. Uh, you can use standard, which makes it 1 
one sensitivity pretty much feel the same for all of them. But I highly suggest going advanced. But if you are using advanced or uh, standard though, a good range would be like 24 through 27 as they're not too slow, but just right in that sweet spot. Uh, I used to use like 25, 26 back then up until Shadow Legacy, because that's when these advanced settings were put in the game. Now for advanced though, I'd say 1x through 2.5x sites, definitely somewhere between the 20s and 30s range, as it's perfect and won't make your aim go all over the place, it's in that slow spot, but it'll definitely feel much faster. Now 3x to 12x, these are ones that I would suggest tuning up a little on your own, kind of experimenting. But I wouldn't worry too much about these sites as you won't be using them that much. Really the only time that you'll be using like 12x is with Kali, if you're zooming in a lot. But mainly I'd say the majority would be using 1x and 2.5x, so I would say mainly to focus on these types of sensitivities. Now onto accessibility, lastly. For optics, you can change the color. Uh, I keep these on red because I found it to be overall better for me. I have used pink and white in the past, and those are good ones, and I've seen others use those as well. Blue is a very good one too if you are looking for more options. So it all comes down to personal preference once again. Uh, I just find red to be better and overall the standard one for me, so. Yeah, you might want to experiment with some of these too. Now, optic opacity, I keep this on 60 because I think it's a good balance of it not covering your crosshairs too much so that you can still see the enemy in front of you still. But I have seen people keep it on 100 as well. Somewhere between like 60 and 70 is a good range. If you keep it on 100 too, that's fine as well. It's not going to like impact your gameplay as much. But I definitely suggest turning it down if you're having a little trouble with it. Screen shake, I turned this off. I used to have it on medium. But I turned it off completely and honestly, it's much better because sometimes the screen shake can be too much for people. So having it on medium or off is honestly better overall. So there you go guys, uh, I hope I did my best with this settings guide because in general I am a terrible fucking explainer. <laughs> but I hope I at least got the point across for some of these sections of the video. Uh, I want to at least help those who are starting out and pretty much need more help and are confused on some of these settings, so at least I hope I could help in a way. If this guide was helpful, then any form of support is appreciated, and if you'd like to see more Siege content, then a subscribe is welcome too. I hope all of you take care and hopefully find your settings, and I hope all of you have a great rest of your day. Take care.